Today we're going to return to a somewhat familiar topic uh, regarding controlling hazardous fume and gases during welding. Uh, welding joins material together, of course, by melting a, pe a metal workpiece along with the filler metal to form a strong joint. And the welding process produces visible smoke that contains harmful metal fume and gas byproducts. So we're going to go into a discussion about welding operations, applicable OSHA standards and suggestions for providing you as a welder uh, and your coworkers uh, some protection from the exposure to the many hazardous substances that you find in welding fumes. Now, we have more than one type of welding. Welding is classified into two groups. Fusion, which is heat alone or pressure, that is heat and pressure welding. There are three types of fusion welding, electric arc, gas, and uh, thermit. Uh, electric arc welding is the most widely used type of fusion welding. It employs the electric arc to melt the base and the filler to metals and arc welding uh, types in order of decreasing fume production are uh, flux core, uh, then shielded metal arc, then gas metal arc, and then tungsten inert gas. So the shielded metal arc is the one that we are using primarily. Uh, gas or oxy fuel welding uses a flame from burning a gas, usually acetylene to melt metal at a joint to be welded. It's a common method for welding iron, uh, steel, cast iron, and copper. Thermit welding uses a chemical reaction to produce intense heat uh, instead of using gas fuel or electric current. Pressure welding uses heat along with impact type pressure to join the pieces. Oxy fuel and plasma cutting along with brazing are related to welding as they all involve the melting of metal uh, and the generation of airborne metal fumes. Uh, brazing is a metal joint process where only the filler metal is melted. So none of that's new to any of you, but it's part of the whole discussion. So what are the health effects of breathing, uh, breathing welding fumes, acute exposure to welding fume and gases can result in eye, nose, and throat irritation, dizziness, nausea. Uh, workers in the area who experience these symptoms should leave the area immediately and seek fresh air and obtain medical attention. Prolonged exposure to welding fume may cause lung damage and various types of cancer, including uh, lung, uh, larynx, and urinary tract. Uh, health effects from certain fumes may include metal fume fever, stomach ulcers, kidney damage, and nervous system damage. Prolonged exposure to ma uh, manganese fume can cause Parkinson's-like symptoms. Now, gases such as helium, argon, and carbon dioxide uh, displace oxygen in the air and lead to suffocation, particularly when welding in confined or enclosed spaces. And we have very um, elaborate procedures for our confined space work that we do have to do from time to time. So you want to consult at any time that you're welding in a confined space or going to be welding in a confined space. Uh, carbonide, carbon monoxide gas can form, uh, posing a serious asphyxiation hazard. Then also we want to talk about welding in hexavalent chromium. Chromium is a co component in stainless steel, non-ferrous alloys, chromate coatings, and some welding consumables. Chromium is uh, converted to its hexavalent state uh, during the welding process. Um, that Fume is highly toxic, can damage the eyes, the skin, the nose, the throat, the lungs, and cause cancer. Uh, and there are some very specific regulations that OSHA has in relation to hexavalent chrome. So reducing exposure to welding fume, welders should understand the hazards of the materials they're working with. That's the reason why we're having this conversation. OSHA's uh, hazard communication standard requires employers to provide information, training for workers on hazardous materials in the workplace. Uh, welding surface, surfaces should be clean of any coating that w could potentially create toxic exposure, such as solvent residue and paint. Workers should position themselves to avoid, if at all possible, breathing, welding, fumes, and gases. For example, workers should stay upwind, uh, if possible, when uh, welding in the open or in outdoor environments. Then uh, also general ventilation, that is the natural or forced movement of fresh air, can reduce fume and gas levels in the work area. Welding outdoors or in open workspaces does not guarantee adequate ventilation. In work areas without ventilation and exhaust systems, welders should use natural drafts along with proper positioning to keep fumes and gases away from themselves and other workers. And also, 
local exhaust ventilation systems. Uh, that's something that we can use uh, to remove fumes and gases from the welder's breathing zone. Uh, that can be take the form of a fume hood, uh, an extractor, uh, a vacuum nozzle like a smoke eater close to the plume source uh, to remove the maximum am amount of fume and gases. Uh, portable or flexible exhaust systems can be positioned uh, so that the fume gases are drawn away from the welder. Uh, keep exhaust ports away from other workers. And then consider substituting, if possible, a lower fume generation uh, or less toxic welding type or consumable. That's not always possible for us to do. Uh, however, don't also don't weld in confined spaces without ventilation. Now, once again, we have very specific procedures uh, that we follow with regard to that. Uh, respiratory protection may be required if work practices and ventilation don't reduce the exposure to safe levels. So these are things we wanted to have a discussion about today. And uh, I trust that that will help uh, as you consider your situation when you're welding under various circumstances as we're exposed to it very, very consistently.